had really nicely paved, smooth roads. Pretty much perfect. <laughs> Up until now, all of a sudden the road turned into a bunch of crap and uh, tons of potholes. Death it's, on either side. Yeah, it's still paved though, at least. So yeah, if it started raining or anything, it wouldn't be too terrible. Yeah, that is true. It's better than a dirt road. Yeah. But this is like second and first gear all the way up this. Yeah. Ah, stuck. <laughs> Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. It is almost the end of our trip here in Sri Lanka. It came and went like that. You guys so fast too fast dang it yeah but one thing we have not yet explored or really dove into is the tea culture here in Sri Lanka we kind of mentioned it in a previous video but tea is the number one export of Sri Lanka it's that big of a deal mm -hmm. here and we are in the heart of tea country we've been staying in the town of Nuara Elia which is kind of in the center of the bottom portion of the island of Sri Lanka it's just as far as the eye can see tea plantations like this just beautiful like this. one right behind us driving through here the hills are just covered in the beautiful greenery they're growing so much stuff out here in addition to the tea there's fruits and veggies and flowers all over the place. You're just in the middle of nature out here. It's beautiful. We are going to be drinking a lot of tea today. But uh, first off, we figured we probably need to go to the source. So mm -hmm. we have come to the Damro Tea Factory and this place is magnificent and huge, you guys. Oh my gosh. As we were driving here, it was just nonstop tea fields. So this is only part of it that you see behind us, yeah, this giant wall of tea. There, a lot of them are labeled who they belong to and Damro's, they've had labels on fields for the past like nine kilometers yeah, so or so. They make they a lot of tea. They make a lot of tea. <laughs> One really cool thing to do in this area is to tour the tea factory. So mm -hmm. that's what we're gonna do here at Damro. We're gonna tour the tea factory, see how it's made. Ultimately, we are going to go to a very special afternoon tea. Yes, uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but I think it's going to be very British and I'm very excited for it. Quite British. Quite British. Sorry for that. This is, this is only the beginning of the British <laughs> accents, you guys. It's, it's gonna come out hard. All right, we're gonna go ahead inside and start drinking tea. Yes. We have met up with our guide. Her name is Malati. She's going to be taking us around and teaching us all about tea. <laughs> so there you go. These are the tea leaves. We're picking only the young leaves, the top leaves. Ah, okay. We shoot black two leaves with the small buds. Then you make the good cup of tea. Each plant you can take once a week, no season, throw the year. Ah. So once a week, each plant you can take yes, all the leaves uh, off? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Very fast to grow. The life of the tea plant about 50 years. If you don't cut it, the plant is grow 9 meter, like tea tree. Wow. So every five years we do the pruning, cut. This is the black tea, the pest process to dry. Then you plug the fresh leaves, everything, put it into the trough. We use the fan, the box inside the big fan. The fan air vision blowing. Oh, oh. the air going underneath. Oh. It is normal air, eh? mm -hmm. cold air. Eh? Just remove the moisture, 50 percentage. Got it. So it stays in here for how long? Five? 14 hours. 14 hours, and then they change this out. Yeah. Every five hours, mix it. Yeah, so they mix it every five hours. Yeah. There's by a hand. lot of tea. No, no machines in here, just by hand. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. Tour is finished. Malati was a great guide. Taught us all about the tea making process. We actually learned that this is the largest tea factory, I guess, or tea producer in Sri Lanka. It's been around since 1928, so it's about 100 years yeah. old. I think there's a thousand acres worth of tea. It's just tea as far as the eye can see oh, yeah. out here. It's so pretty. Also, I don't know if we mentioned, but the tour is completely free, but they do recommend that you tip your tour guide. Yeah. Um, but you also get a free tea tasting either before or after the tour. But as we mentioned earlier, we have very specific plans for trying some tea later. So we had a little sip before our tour, but we are saving the real tea tasting for just a little bit when we're back in town. little road that just snakes through the tea fields so we came out and we're just chilling and enjoying the view yeah I think the ladies are coming in from harvesting which I don't know if we mentioned they do it all by hand here so they're just out in the field you can see all these ladies with these white bags on their back mm -hmm. just harvesting tea and they got the cute little puppies with them but I think we're in a pretty dangerous little spot here <laughs> yeah so we're like kind of blocking the road move. so we're gonna get the heck out of here yeah. <laughs> Tea time, you guys. 
we have come to the Grand Hotel, which they actually do British-style afternoon high tea. Apparently there's a difference between afternoon tea and high tea. I couldn't quite figure out what it was, but some sources I read said that high tea is served on a high table, and afternoon tea is just served like in a lounge chair or something like that. Any Brits watching will have to let me know if that's true at all. But the way it works is for 1800 rupee, which is about uh, $10 USD, you get a bunch of delicious finger foods. Also two big old pots of tea each, which they bring out with a little warmer on it, which is so nice. The first tea I got was a cinnamon tea. We decided to get go a little, uh, get a little crazy with our tea, because usually I just stick with black tea. Ooh, that has got some strong cinnamon flavor. It's absolutely delicious. If you don't like cinnamon, you would hate this, <laughs> but it's quite bitter. It needs a little bit of sugar. <laughs> For my first pot, I thought I ordered chamomile, but I think I wound up with cinnamon apple, which was actually gonna be my second pot. So this is a delightful surprise. It smells so like Christmassy and it's so cool out here. It's just perfect for the vibe. Oh, mm, mm hmm It's got a little fruitiness from the apple and the cinnamon gives it a nice like cozy taste to it. It's really good. It's almost a little tart, like tart apple. It's a high tea. It's a high tea. Mm. Wait, how do you do it? Let's with see the, your pinky technique. Can you hold it like that? Am I I'm supposed to do one finger through here? The Grand Hotel is a beautiful colonial hotel. We read it was built in the Elizabethan style. From what we understand, there was originally a structure here built in 1828, and since then they've added on to it. But according to the menu and some other places, it says this was established in 1891. So maybe that's so, when it became the Grand Hotel. I'm not exactly sure, be. but it is quite grand. It is, it's beautiful. And like we mentioned in our previous video, Noir Elia is known as Little England because it, has, because it has such a British colonial feel to it. And that's why high tea is so appropriate. Yes, and it's so perfect that it's situated right in the middle of all of the tea plantations in this beautiful, very British climate, you know, kind of, it's typically overcast, rainy, a little cool up here. Yeah, it's, it really actually reminds us a yeah. lot of England. But if you love tea, this is the place to come. This is a tea lover's dream, not just the Grand, but this whole area. This entire area, oh, it's so fantastic for tea. Our beautiful tray has arrived, our tower actually, of <laughs> all kinds of little goody finger foods. I'm gonna start with this little guy, a mutton samosa. Cause we have had some amazing samosas uh, since we've been in Sri Lanka. So I imagine this will be just as delightful. It's so tiny and cute. I love it. So as you can see, there's just a little pocket of mutton in there with a bunch of seasoning. I think there's a little bit of veg, maybe some potato. It's just perfectly spiced and seasoned and so delicious and super crunchy on the outside. They actually have a cafe on site that's kind of separate from the Grand. And we've been going there to get iced lattes because they make them pretty good there. But we also had a mutton samosa this morning. How does it compare to that one? The one over there was spicier and bigger. I liked it better. Yeah. But this is a nice little you know, bite of a samosa if you'd like one. I'm going dessert first, you guys. <laughs> this is a raspberry tart. It's the cutest little thing. <laughs> so you just have some like raspberry sugary powder or crust on the top. And then a little bit of a, it looks like raspberry chocolate mix. This is a one biter, right? For you, yes. It's gonna be. Mm. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> the raspberry flavor is amazing. The filling is almost like a chocolate raspberry pudding, but the flavor is great and you get a really nice crunch from this little pastry on the outside. It's delicious. <laughs> This is a uh, Supreme Ceylon Single Origin. Just tastes like delicious black tea. Ooh, it's a little hot. <laughs> we are actually going to pick up tomorrow. We haven't really been able to get out into the surrounding nature, so we are gonna hop in our tuk-tuk. We are gonna head to Horton Plains, which is like an hour or two hour drive through the middle of nowhere, so it's gonna be an adventure. <laughs> it should be an absolutely beautiful drive to an absolutely beautiful hike with yeah. an absolutely beautiful viewpoint. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> more beautiful. But we'll see you there. Get there before the uh, clouds roll in 
because they pretty much every 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 local we've spoken to says they come in at 10 a.m. So yeah. we got to get there before then. I see some off in the distance. I'm hoping we're not too late, but it's so sunny right here. Maybe we're right on time. Yeah. You guys, we turned the corner and all these monkeys were just sitting here. <laughs> they have such an epic view out here. Yeah. I'd be sitting here too. Although I think that they are debating whether they should jump in here with us. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I'm kicking them. We don't have any food for you. Okay, so we paid 7500 total for the two of us and our tuk-tuk. It's 2730 per adult, plus a service charge, plus your vehicle charge, plus an 8% VAT. Plus, if we had had a driver, it was an extra 100 rupees. Luckily, yeah. Eric's driving, so I'm the driver. savings. <laughs> 40, 30 USD? Something like that. Oh, gosh. Maybe more. <laughs> it's, it's what we paid to enter the park for the safari as well, about the same. So just know when you come to these national parks, they're pretty pricey. Also good to know, it is cash only. No cards accepted here. But we are all paid up, we got our permit. Let's go explore. We have made it to <laughs> Horton Plains. Actually, we've been driving through it this whole time, but yeah. we made it to the spot that's the start of the trail that we're gonna be walking. Yeah, so it's a nine kilometer trail to the world's end is what we're wanting to get to. And it's called the world's end because that's where the world ends. It's true, <laughs> the world is flat. We are here to confirm. <laughs> But it should be some epic views. There should be clouds rolling in. The clouds actually roll in. I think I mentioned this, but they roll in at about 10. So it's like an hour till 10 or so. so yeah, and there hustle. should be plenty of time. But knowing us and how we hike, aka film everything when we're hiking, it's going to take us a while. Okay, let's go. monkeys roaming around in these woods. We just walked by the spot and all of a sudden they were all above us just jumping across the path in the trees staring, staring at, us. at us. Yeah <laughs> they were pretty cute. I think those were the purple faced ones we were trying to see earlier. Yeah. We have made it to the world's end. It's pretty incredible. So as you walk up, it just reveals itself and you get this incredible view of just this deep valley. There's a reservoir off in the distance. Mm -hmm. When we showed up, there weren't that many clouds, but as we were standing here, the clouds have slowly started to roll in. They haven't quite filled this area though. We've seen some pictures where this whole thing is filled with clouds. So I think we kind of lucked out because a lot of times you don't really get much of a view. Yeah, but the clouds being here would be equally as pretty, just you wouldn't see the valley. So it's a different kind of view, I guess, whatever yeah. day you come on. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us to the afternoon tea mm. and the tea plantation and stuff. <laughs> I still can't get it over that there's a little England here in Sri Lanka. Yeah, it's amazing. Who would have thought? But this area has just been so magical and so beautiful and so delicious. We've had such an amazing time. I don't want it to end. But it must end because we have a date with Oman, you guys. Okay, that makes me happy. Another new country for yeah. us. I cannot wait. So next time you guys see us, we're actually going to leave our tuk-tuk here and then get a ride over to Colombo. And the next time you guys see us, we're going to be hopping a plane over to Oman. Goodbye, adventures. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>